This is the news load. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Stevenson. I'm here with News Load, and today I am so beyond excited that I am going to be able to interview Mark DeBonis. Hello, Mark. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. Where are you right now? Right now, I am in Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, Buffalo. Yeah. But we are moving from places to places. This is a transitional period. Yes, I am in the. I'm actually, as you could probably see behind me, some stuff there. I'm uh, moving out of Buffalo this week, or you know, by the end of August or whatever. I don't know when this is going to air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And and we're doing Toronto and LA. So the the short version of it is, I got my citizenship a couple months ago uh, for US. Uh, and that's kind of the reason that I've been here to like, uh, I got, I got married in uh, a couple of years ago in Toronto and instead of sacrificing my green card and pretending like a long distance relationship can work from Toronto to LA, uh, I decided, you know, we kind of decided on the idea of like living in Buffalo and it's been a long couple of years, I'm not going to lie. It hasn't been easy, but, um, it's now over. I got my citizenship in May. So that essentially allows me to kind of make North America my oyster where I could, uh, you know, have my home base in Toronto for the time being, be with my, you know, live with my wife, obviously just get reacquainted to the Toronto comedy scene and in Canada. And then the idea is furnished sublet. So, you know, reach out to people that I know, let them know that if they're gone for a couple of weeks or a month, I could kind of come in and out and I don't have anything to worry about having, you know, dual status. Do you have uh, your packing all organized? You know, like these are my set 10 underwear. I'll tell you, I I was thinking about this the other day. My packing has gotten a little bit more organized than just throwing everything in garbage bags. Uh, I've I've definitely upgraded to bins now. So it's like... I got everything in bins and I feel like it makes it the easiest as possible. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of I overpacked yesterday and I'm still going to be here for four or five days. So now I'm going in and out of bins to get clothes or forks or anything. So I'm just like mentally I'm done here. So I'm like, I got I want to get out, but I have gotten a little bit more organized with the pack. <laughs> Not just a toothbrush anymore. No, no, not just a toothbrush and a bag on a stick like a hobo. Now I got a couple <laughs> more things. <laughs> and is your wife um, going to be, you know, moving to L.A. with you or staying in Toronto? No, her job is uh, kind of secured her in Toronto. Um, she has like, a, you know, a legit job. And uh, it's been the it's been the, the issue over the years um, that it would be something that uh, we had now have the possibility of if there is a reason for me to be in the States long term, uh, we could talk about it because she can just get her status and, you know, we could figure all that out. But for now, the compromise is uh, I'm in Toronto with her and then I leave as pretty much ideally I would like it to be on a schedule like every couple months. So it's not coming out of nowhere, but it's not that easy to find people leaving every couple months. Yeah, yeah. Trying to work around other people's schedule is definitely uh, uh, frustrating for sure. Um, are you guys thinking about kids anytime soon? It's a, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. There's a, it's, you know, in my mind, it's like kind of like, let me just get out of Buffalo first. And then uh, now that that's almost done, we're going to figure out what the next steps are for sure. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm sure you'd be a great dad. That's what I hear. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kids do love me for some reason. I don't I don't know why, but I feel like I have some sort of, I don't know if it's my hair or some sort of aura, but you definitely will not stop talking about how whenever I walk past the kid, they just like will full on stare at me and like turn their head. And like, she's like, I don't know what it is. And I'm like, with my luck, my kid's going to hate me. Oh. But like, who knows? Maybe, maybe I would be a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sweet. Um, you're producing other people's shows now too? 
not producing. Like I'm kind of so. What's happened over the last couple of years of being in Buffalo is that I kind of find it harder as I get older to blindly commit to stuff, you know. And when I don't see momentum with something, it's hard for me to just give it a hundred percent. And stand up being one thing, being here and not really a part of like any scene a hundred percent anymore. You know, obviously the Buffalo comedy scene has been great to me, but it's kind of like. I don't see a lot of carryover momentum there. So I started focusing a lot on production, uh, specifically audio and video stuff. And over the last couple of years, I've, I've, uh, you know, I get, I haven't like produced them, but I, I have, I guess, in a sense, filmed, edited, and did the audio for a couple stand up specials and one man shows. And it's something that I'm now like kind of getting into a lot more. It's actually, was my thing before I started stand up. I went to school for film and audio. So it kind of came around full circle, I guess. And I started really getting into it during COVID because I was in lockdown and had time to focus on something that wasn't stand up, you know? So I've definitely grown a lot in that field also. And I absolutely understand where, you know, sitting back and watching other people do it when you know that you can do it better and you can, you know, help and, and you know, your experience being able to, you know, like improve your community. I, th I think that's terrific. That's kind of the idea, right? Like, I, I don't like the idea to think that I could do it better, but I do think that there are things that could be improved. Uh, and there are little things that, that give me like OCD when I'm like watching something, if I hear something or specifically this is all audio related where there's like certain sounds that I'm like fascinated to find out how to get rid of those sounds because I do think it makes something seem a lot more professional when the audio is a fuller sound than having like a tinny echoey sound, which we see a lot of when you're either recording on your cell phone, obviously, or if the audio is not synced properly um, from the crowd mics. This is all like stuff, but but those are like little things that I've just noticed and that bothered me. And I've kind of made it my mission to find out how to clean that up a bit, I guess. Have you worked with anyone who hasn't reciprocated your um, professionalism? You know, like someone who's completely disagreed with you and have you struggled with that? Yeah, obviously, like it's always the, the thing that I've weirdly found out was the less money somebody has, the more control they want. So I now like have, I really do, I'm not at a point where I could pick and choose what my work is, like as a comedian or as a uh, editor or filmer, but I would rather just make pizzas in the day than somebody like breathing down my neck and, you know, stressing me out a bit. So I have... I really do work with people who are aware of the whole situation. You know, I'm like, this is what you're getting. I show them past work, obviously, for stand up and for film, where I'm like, don't expect anything more than this. Like, it might be more organized for you because I'm not filming myself, but this is what you're getting, you know? And uh, it's just been a learning experience. And this is all from stand up, like learning years ago that. I don't want to, every new comic wants to headline and push themselves to the next level. But I remember a long time ago, I thought to myself, I'm like, I'm done trying to sell myself. I'm going to do my thing. I love stand up. And if you're going to pay me for a show and you don't know what I do, that's your fault, not mine. You know, I'm not going to come in there and do corporate stuff if I'm not a corporate comedian. So, and the funny thing is when I had that thought, um, all of a sudden I started getting all this headline work. This was like years ago. And I was like, I had my highest paying gig at the time. And the guy I told the guy, I'm like, I can't do this, man. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I told myself I'm not headlining shows anymore. If the people don't know who I am, this is like a corporate style thing. I know I'm not going to do well and whatever, whatever. And he said, Mark, I've seen your stand up. I love what you do. I don't care how it goes. I'm booking you because I want you to be there. And it just got rid of all of the pressure and I was able to show up and just perform and not have to be like, Oh, I hope this person likes me or, you know, that it's those little games that I can't deal with anymore. As I get older, you know, that's the big, the big thing. 
It's also fascinating as time goes on, how many people have actually seen your work and who know, you know, what you've done. And, you know, we're still, you know, self-doubting and criticizing ourselves when the reality is um, you have a fan base. People want to work with you. It's really cool. Yeah, well, people, what I've, you know, another thing I've kind of noticed is that people aren't telling you when you're doing stuff right. You know, they love to tell you when you're doing it wrong. Like, even this little podcast that me and my friend started in Buffalo, which is something else that's been kind of like floating around, you know, this guy, his whole world, everyone's telling him how it looks, how it sounds, amazing, amazing. And me, I'm just used to the world of comedy where everyone's just doing a thousand things and nobody is staying. I'm like, man, nobody, I don't even know if anyone's watching this on my end. And I remember I posted one video where I was experimenting with like mic placement and the microphone sounded off. Like it sounded like it was recorded from a cell phone or something. And then people are commenting. They're like, wow, maybe use a microphone next time. And I'm like, so you are watching these videos, you're not liking them, and you're just telling me when I'm doing something wrong, you know? So those are little things that you just, you got to just accept and move on because people just want to tell you when you're, when you're doing it wrong, you know? They don't, they're not there to help you out. I, I posted about a month ago that I was opening for Tony Lee, and this girl started following me on Instagram and immediately posts, wow, I hope you're not opening because if you were, I've seen your stuff, I'd be mortally embarrassed. And I'm sitting there going, whoa, okay, so you're following me, you're watching my stuff, and you're going out of your way. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's absolutely insane. Like, what is that? what is that person gaining from that? You know, like, that's the stuff that, and that's the internet, you know, we got to accept it. It's the world that we live in now, but it's like, it, it, like AI, if AI turns into the internet, it's going to be a scary thing that is like a very angry machine that loves cats, you know, because I feel like the internet is exactly all fail videos and trolling and then cat videos. <laughs> On the road, do you have any tips about um, where people should eat uh, any snacks well, I can tell you that I don't eat meat, which makes road food very hard for me. Uh, and I've gotten into a point of like, I. one benefit of being in Buffalo is I've cooked more at home than I have in my whole life. And now I'm like cooking a lot from home. And when I am on the road, I will, I, I do stay where I know consistent for some, like, for example, like I know Starbucks has bagels and they're the same bagels from buffalo to alabama i'm assuming you know uh and same with tim horton so i stay where i know things are consistent when it comes to that um again i don't eat meat so i don't know if a patty sitting at tim horton's in the middle of nowhere has been sitting longer uh and that's been my like road thing where if i have a hotel i'll obviously try and get like some you know, breakfast stuff. I try and eat more in the morning anyways, and breakfast is an easier low maintenance thing if you're not having eggs or whatever. Uh, but I just stay consistent and it's hard to eat dinner because again, I'm only eating a salad. You know, there's no, not a lot of vegetarian options. Surprisingly, they're not like beyond burgers or impossible burgers. So I would say, yeah, just go where it's consistent. Uh, do you notice a difference between American audiences and Canadian audiences? Yeah, for the most part, like, I think at the end of the day, everyone's looking to have a good time. Uh, but the main difference I've noticed is Americans are just more selfish. And I mean that in a good and a bad way, where if there are four Americans in a crowd, and that's it, there's only four people in a room, I've, from my experience... If they like you, they're going to be applauding and laughing like it's a sold out show where if there's four Canadians in a room and that's it, uh, Canadians typically are a little bit more reserved and they're going to be more embarrassed to be laughing if no one else is in the room and if they're the only ones. Uh, so Americans will also let you know quickly that they don't like you where Canadians would, but more out of like more heckling would come, I think, in, in the, on the American side because they it's their money, right? Like for Canada, it's like a night out or whatever. And in America, they're like, this is my time. You're now wasting my time, you know, where I've definitely done shows in, in Canada where uh, they're just quiet watching and having a good time. But in the States, they'll let you know if they don't like you. 
it's almost like an entitlement. Like I'm paying you to dance. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a business in the States, right? Like they know that it's like, this is supposed to be your job, right? Where in Canada, it's obviously grown. For example, at, in Calgary, people would come up to me and they'd be like, Hey, you should really try stand up. Like they don't even know, like they think that I come with the hotel, you know? And like, and, um, but that's just how it is. Right. Has anybody this is my experience. Now I can't speak on behalf of the whole world. Yeah. 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 Um, has anyone left you starstruck? Have you met any pretty cool celebrities on the road? Not really. Like, I would say I haven't really met anyone that's, like, left me starstruck. It was, like, the first time that I ever had that weird moment was, again, a while, a long time ago when I first started doing – this was, like, when Tom Green started doing stand-up. Like, it was in my first couple years of stand-up, and he really wasn't – doing it at that time and i remember for some weird sequence of events i ended up doing like four or five shows with him in like three months it was like to the point where i would walk in and he remembered me we would talk and hang out and it wasn't even until all those shows were done that i realized how big tom green was in my life you know like thinking about watching him as a kid and then like all the movies and the tom green show and and that was like i didn't even realize at the moment because in my mind we're on a show and i'm there performing with you uh but after I was like, oh my God, I'm like, this guy, like, literally, like, I used to watch Tom Green all the time. And, and uh, now obviously he's performing a lot more, so it's not as crazy. But, but it was, that was, I think, the only time I really had that moment after, you know? It's exciting. It's exciting. So, um, what are you uh, working on right now? A a another album? Yeah. So I think, like, um, I just did a recording in Toronto that, I kind of was tired of doing these whole setups for everybody else. And I'm like, why am I filming my stuff when it's like one camera in the back of the room? So I, I, I put my money where my mouth is type thing. And I set up a whole room uh, with multiple cameras and a bunch of mics. And I did a recording that I don't know, I'm going to like really release or just kind of do like a show like that. I haven't done a, a show in Toronto in a long time. Show went really well. I was very happy with it. And Something that I'm trying to work on now is just having patience. And with that, I'm going to not just kind of release it right away. I want to have a couple shows in the bank where I could possibly cut together a set all over a couple venues maybe or, you know, just have one solid set all the way through. So I, I'm looking to possibly release something like mid to end of uh, near the end of the year if it does happen. And it's going to be... A continuation of my last album which was called Minutia so I'm going to call this one Minutia 2 and the idea was it's kind of like a concept album where uh, the stand-up mixes in with the sketches but it's like so if you listen to the whole thing where the stand-up joke ends the sketch kind of starts and then where the sketch ends the next joke kind of starts so it but they also have to be standalone tracks, right? So that was kind of the, the tricky part to make it where you could listen to a sketch by itself. But if you do listen to the album start to finish, you'll either get a visualiz visualization of the stand-up joke or uh, a cut of the thing. So that's kind of what's happening right now. Phenomenal. And where will we be able to see that? Uh, the video, if it comes out, it's going to be just on YouTube and all of that. And then it will be streamed on all platforms that uh, you could listen to comedy on. Uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, all that stuff. And just look up... That, that will be with through Comedy Records. And look up Minutia, Mark the Bonus. That's the first one. Yeah, the, that one's out now. It's on... Uh, it's streamed everywhere. Minutia... Problem is, don't ask me how to spell it. Uh, it's one of those things I have no idea how to spell, uh, and I always forget how to spell it. Um, so, just if you put in Mark the Bonus, the album covers uh, it's like a, a thing with like a face and a fingerprint. So, it seems like an easy word to spell, but I'm thinking about changing it just out of that reason alone. <laughs> oh, Mark, you're <laughs> absolutely adorable. Well, I hope you and your wife uh, get to hang out soon. And um, if you can just say one more thing for me, if you can say it loud, say it proud. I love Newsload. Right now? Oh. <laughs> I am Mark DeBonis, and I love Newsload. Thank you, Mark. I hope you have an amazing day. 
Thank you. Sorry for the complicated back and forth. I'm happy we got to do this. No, it's so good. I'm so grateful. I really appreciate it. And I hope you uh, move safely. Yes. Thank you. And I'll, I'm sure I'll see you soon. For sure. Bye-bye. Bye. This is the news load.